Skanders obviously had a lot of toys that came with it. I mean, there were over 500 Skanders to collect. But what I think a lot of people forget to talk about is how many Skanders accessories there really was. And when I say accessory, I don't mean merch or anything like that. I mean different things that you could buy that would go along with your Skylanders that you may be able to use in game. When making this video, there's actually a lot more than I thought there'd be. So let's take a look back at some Skanders accessories. I think the biggest one that you kind of need to play the game with is the portal. The portal is technically an accessory, and this comes in every single starter pack. However, there are only five unique portals. As in Imaginators, the portal is the same as the Swap Force one. The SSA portal was your run-of-the-mill portal in my opinion. Nothing much to it. In fact, my SSA portal actually is battery-powered, so I never really use it anymore. I use the Giants portal on SSA, and the Giants portal has the capability of reading light core characters. That's why they made another one, I think. It lights up more and it's kind of more see-through than the SSA one. Now, Swap Force obviously needed a new portal to read the swappers, but it also still takes a long time to read the swappers compared to other Skanders when you place them on the portal. This portal is both wider than the previous portals, but it also is a bit slimmer. Much like Swap Force, Trap Team needed a new portal redesign, so you could place traps in them. Toy Survive really went all out with this one as you can see and it's the best portal in my opinion. The bottom of the portal is clear and it looks like Traptanium and you also have the villain vault at the end of it. Really this is my favorite portal I just think it looks so cool. Now with superchargers you didn't actually need a new portal but they made one anyway because the Traptanium portal just wasn't good as fitting vehicles on it as this new one is. It is the slimmest portal but it also has the biggest base for a Skylanders portal, so it can fit vehicles. This design is also pretty cool. I like the blue flames coming out of the back, and you still have the trap slot in this portal, even though traps are virtually useless in this game. And like I said, no new portal redesign for Imaginators, which I think is a big missed opportunity. Imagine having a slot to put your Imaginator crystals in, I think that would have looked awesome. But I get why they didn't make a new one, as they didn't really need to make a new one for the portal to read Imaginators. Another accessory that was also found in the starter pack is the poster. Now I know that some people use the poster as a collection update, and they cross each character off on the poster once you get them. But I think this is an absolute sin. I mean, these posters are great to put on your wall, and you're just gonna ruin them? Now the thing about posters is that they don't actually show every single Skander, they don't show variants. Well, they show series variants, but other than that, the posters do not have any in-game variants on them. But who needs those anyway? Sadly, I've seemed to have misplaced or I guess thrown away my old posters. I don't really know what happened to them, but they're gone. But I'm excited to say that I'm trying to rebuild my poster collection. Now I haven't put that much effort into it as it's not the most important thing to collect right now, but I did pick up the Skylanders Superchargers poster. So I am looking to get the rest one day that is. I think that it was a great idea for them to add posters to the game. Just so you can see on day one, what the Skylanders will look like, and keep you excited for each wave to come out. Now the last accessory in this video from a starter pack is the trap tray from Trap Team. Now this is awesome. This was such an amazing idea to have to put your traps in so they aren't all just laying out on the floor. They also fit so perfectly. And the funny thing is that there's an accessory to this accessory. There's a trap tray box that you can buy to put your trap tray in. And boom, look at that, it looks sick. There's also an image on the trap box that has a bunch of villains on it, and it states that they're at Wolfgang's house. I think it's funny how little effort they put into this picture, and just put all the villains' PNGs images on it, but it's a nice touch anyway. Now the big question is, was this picture taken before they were trapped, or after? This looks especially good too if you have a lot of traps in this box. And uh, something like this would have been cool for the Imaginite Crystals, I think, in Imaginators too, but whatever. Alright, so the first accessory that were found outside of the starter packs were the Adventure Packs that were in each game besides Giants. The Expansion Packs, for the most part, don't have any ties to the stories, and they never really stated the levels take place before, during, or after the main story. But in SSA, there were four of these. We had the Dark Light Crypt, Pirate Seas, Empire Ice, and the Dragon's Peak. And like I said, Giants had none of these, but this is the only game where you can put previous expansion packs in the game and still play those levels. You can't do that in any other game, but Giants, you can. Now, Swap Force brought us two new expansion packs with the Tower of Time and Sheepwreck Islands. Then Trap Team, much like SSA, had four expansion packs. 
The first two were just regular ones, like the Nightmare Express and the Mirror Mystery. But Trap Team actually has two expansion packs that tie to the story, with the Midnight Museum and the Sunscraper Spire. They introduced the two new elements, the Dark and Light elements. In Supercharters, we actually did get expansion packs, but they weren't for levels, rather, they gave you new racing arenas. There was the Wolfgang Air Cup, the Golden Queen Sea Cup, and the Count Moneybone Land Cup. And finally, Imaginers had the most level packs in it, with five. The Enchanted Elven Forest, Griffin Park Observatory, Thumpin' Weapon Islands, Cursed Tiki Temple, and the Lost Imaginite Mines. You could also categorize magic items as these type of accessories. There are a lot of magic items to list, so I'm not going to list them all, but basically, these are just items that you place on the portal that do something. There are too many to talk about, but noticeable ones are the Raining Anvil, Heal Elixir, and Sparks. The first game to have an accessory be a main part of the game was Trap Team, with the traps. Now, the traps are technically accessories, since you do not need them to finish the game, however, they do help you out a lot. Now, some of these traps look super cool, and they have great designs. And then there is the Tech Tiki Trap. The thing with traps is, though, that they made more traps than you actually need. For example, there are six magic traps, but there's only three magic villains. But I think this is actually a good thing, so you can get enough traps even if you can't find one specific one. Also, you probably just want to have a different trap for every single villain, and with there being sometimes more traps than you need, that will give you that chance. But for some reason, the dark and light elements have 4 villains in both of them, but there are only 3 dark and 3 light traps. Why? Just why? This makes absolutely no sense. Was it really that hard to make like a dark snake trap and an angel light trap? Now you can never have a trap tree that looks fully complete. Whatever, I'll always only have two light traps anyway because the light yawn trap exists. Uh, pay to win? You guys like that? Well, the Imaginite chest isn't exactly pay to win, but they kind of are at the same time. These are kind of like mystery boxes for Imaginators. You can get a bronze, silver, or gold chest, and I only ever got one of these, so I'm not quite sure how they exactly work, but they just give you an Imaginite chest with some parts in it. And if you've played Imaginators for basically more than a week, then it's probably not worth it, as you can still find all these pieces in the game. I get why they added them, you gotta give that extra money, and I respect the hustle. But I bet almost nobody bought the Imaginite mystery boxes. They are simply just not worth it, and they're not needed. I also might add that the one and only time I got an Imaginite mystery box, I got a bronze chest. The worst chest you can get, so I don't have the best experience with them. Kind of like level packs, we've also seen accessories for the battle arenas, with the battle packs. Now, we really only ever saw these in Giants and Swap Force. I know there was the Volcanic Vault in SSA, but I still have no idea where that came from, so I'm not counting it. In all the battle packs, there are two Skylanders, one New Skander and one Series variant. And then there's also the battle pack, which had a figure much like the level packs. There were three battle packs in Giants, the Scorpion Striker that came with Series 2 Zap and Hot Dog, and the other battle pack was the Dragonfire Cannon that came with Series 2 Chop Chop and Shroom Boom. And there was also a variant Dragonfire Cannon called the Golden Dragonfire Cannon that comes with the exact same characters and it's just golden. I do not know why they added it, but cool. In Swap Force, there was also two more battle packs. The first one was the Archean Crossbow that came with Grim Creeper in Series 2 Camo, and the next battle pack was the Fiery Forge that came with Series 3 Terrafin and Bumble Blast. In total, there were five battle packs, and I actually like the idea of them. They probably would have also made a return in Trap Team if it wasn't for Toys for Bob removing the feature. I actually really would have liked to see these again. I think battle packs are a pretty cool addition to the game that I just wish we got to see more of. One last accessory from Skanders are the cards that came with the characters. They stopped making them after Trap Team, however, but I understand why. They really just aren't needed that much in my opinion. Now granted, they do give you the level 1 stats, but your Skander will probably be level 1 for a good 5 seconds before those stats become meaningless. Either way, they existed, and I have been able to find some that I still kept. And speaking of things that were found with the Skanders in their boxes, there was also stickers, for some reason, that came with the Skanders. This time the stickers extended to superchargers. Again, not needed in my opinion. But yeah, little kids probably liked them, so whatever. You got a sticker that came along with the Skander, and you can just put it wherever I guess, I don't know. 
I've also been able to hold on to some of those stickers too and still have some to this day. Now I don't know if you would count this as an accessory, but I am anyway. There was a series of things for Skonders called the Fun Play Hideaway sets. These are sets that you can put your Skonders on. There was one that was just a Skyland theme, and there's one called Waterfall Island. We also got a Flynn ship model too, and the last one was the Dr. Crankcase's Lair. Now I would never really get any of these as I have the ultimate Skonder shelf. However, I can understand why kids would absolutely dig this type of thing. A Skonders model that you can place your Skonders on sounds sick, and all four of these fun play hideaway sets are good ideas I think. Now I would have loved a Skonders Academy version of the fun play hideaway sets. I think that would look cool having all your Skonders on the Skonders Academy. But hey, these four are good, and like I said, I could see why kids would like them. You have just this cool set that you can put all your Skonders on and look at. That would probably be something very appealing to a kid. Okay, this one I'm pretty sure doesn't count as an accessory, but I saw when I was looking up accessories and I had to talk about it. I present you the Chompy Pop-Up Storage. This is a giant Chompy that opens its mouth and states it can fit up to 100 Skonders on it. Okay, why does this exist? Now, looking at it more, it looks like the Chompy Puppet. And you know what? I take my words back. This is awesome, and I might buy this one day. I mean, how could you not? And the funniest thing to me is that this isn't some random company that made this. This is an officially Skonders branded product. So I mean, isn't that something that is so weird looking? I mean, yeah, who knew there could be so many Skonders accessories? I mean, there was a lot like the posters, I mean, the portals, even the trap box, which I think is really cool. But yeah, hope you guys have enjoyed this video about talking about accessories. And thank you guys for watching. Wait, what is that? Yeah. Hey. It's the thirst, thirstiest time of the year. Hey. Yeah. I have just one query. Want a Sprite Cranberry? Uh -huh. The answer is clear.